Good day and great health. My name is Dr. Jericho Sarko of Ohio Specific Chiropractic. I'm a pediatric, family wellness, and upper cervical specific chiropractor. Today on this video, we're going to talk about the connection between seizures and or epilepsy and the upper cervical spine. Now again, as always, the goal of chiropractic is not to treat any condition, disease directly, but to remove neurological roadblocks that are preventing the full expression of health and well-being in the body. To uh, further delve into that connection between the upper cervical spine and seizures, we're going to do just a simple crash course in anatomy and physiology. The four main structures we focus in on the upper cervical spine are the foramen magnum, found on the occipital bone of our skull. Next down we have the atlas bone, or the C1 cervical vertebra. Next down we have the axis bone, or the C2 cervical vertebra. Now housed and protected, by the C1 and C2 vertebral bones, this is where we will find the brainstem area of our nerve system. Now instead of focusing on individual nerve groups, how they can be affected by a vertebral subluxation, we're actually going to just talk about the overall uh, concepts of how a vertebral subluxation can affect the functional capability of the central nerve system as a whole. So to do that, we'll just do a simple diagram of our brain. So here we have uh, two, in our brain, there's two major lobes or hemispheres that make up our brain tissue. We have the left lobe and the right lobe. Now each lobe is then further divided into two main uh, nerve groups. We have gray matter on the outside and white matter on the inside. Dropping down to the spinal cord, we'll skip the brain, brain stem for a second, down in our spinal cord, which is really just an extension of the brain, here we have a flip of the gray and the white matter. Here we have gray matter on the inside and white matter on the outside. Not only is, are the, the gray matter and the white matter flipped, but we also have nerve tracts or nerve fibers that cross over. So we have nerve fibers that go from out to in and from left to right or right to left. So for example, in our right lobe, we have white matter fibers that cross over to the left area of the spinal cord. Also, we have gray matter crossing over from the left lobe and forming the gray matter on the right aspect of the spinal cord. Now this crossing of these, fi of these fibers happens trillions of times found in the brain stem. The brainstem is literally the connection point between the spinal cord below, or the body down below, and the brain above. Now a lot of this, this, this crossing of these fibers makes up one uh, special um, nerve groups found in the brainstem called the reticular formation. The reticular formation does a, uh, has a special job of synchronizing motor, visceral, emotional and conscious communication between the brain and the body. Now there's four main functions of our nerves. They create all the movements we make, they sense everything we feel, they regulate all our body organs, and they relate us to the outside world. Now our, our brain serves two main jobs in, within the, the functionality of our nerve system. It stores information and it generates energy. Now our brainstem, its job is to collect all this information and all this energy from the brain and then adapt it and organize it for the spinal cord down below. What's the job of the spinal cord? The job of the spinal cord is to then distribute that info and energy to the body and its end organ, whether it's the heart, the lung, the liver, every uh, tissue, organ, and cell of our body. Now nerves can get stressed and when nerves get stressed, it affects their perception, sensation, and behavior. There are three general types of stresses that affect uh, the nerves and their functioning. They are physical, chemical, and emotional in nature. When we talk about physical stress, we are also talking about what's called traumas. Uh, different types of mechanical traumas. Uh, slip and fall on the ice, fall off a ladder. Uh, from the birthing process, the OBGYN maybe. Uh, wrenching the neck too much. These are all creating mechanical traumas. 
Uh, chemical stress, another word we use is toxins. This can come from our diet or, or our lack of diet. If we're not eating the proper foods, uh, if we're ingesting too many different harmful chem uh, chemicals such as artificial ingredients uh, or synthetic products, um, also from overconsumption of different uh, drugs such as alcohol, nicotine, and prescription drugs. Emotional stress is affecting our thoughts, how our mindset uh, affects the overall functioning capability of our body, how different neurochemical and neuro uh, hormonal controls from our brain control the output of information to the body. Now, again, a part of our brainstem is, job of the brainstem is to adapt all these stresses that are affecting the body and bring the body and keep it in balance and remove this tension off the nerve system. But sometimes too much stress affects the body, either in quality or quantity, and when that happens, it creates abnormal compensations in the body. One example of an abnormal compensation that we deal with as chiropractors is a vertebral subluxation. A vertebral subluxation is a physical presentation of, a, um, of an abnormal compensation. Vertebral subluxations will disrupt the perception, sensation, and behavior of the nerves involved. Now in this case, I'm going to draw in a, an example of a um, vertebral subluxation where the atlas bone is going to imbalance over to the left. When it imbalances over to the left, it encroaches upon the brainstem and it creates inflammation and irritation and friction in the, in the brainstem tissue so it can affect any and all nerves that are affected by this vertebral subluxation. So in this case, if we're focusing in on the reticular formation of all this crossing of fibers, there's trillions of different fibers that come in, come in contact with that atlas bone when it subluxates. So we can have really an output and input of different disruptions, not only in the brain above, but in the body below. So let's look at some general symptoms usually associated with seizures. Um, some general symptoms associated with seizures are confusion, uh, staring spells where you, the, the, the person will look like they're just staring out into space, uncontrolled jerking movements, uh, loss of consciousness or awareness, feelings of fear and anxiety. Now if we look at these uh, general symptoms of epilepsy and, and seizures, we can see they correlate very uh, closely with the nerves that are found or make up parts of the reticular formation. Again, our reticular formation, it's, uh, it synchronizes all the motor or movement, organ uh, or visceral, emotional, and conscious communication between the brain above and the body below. So if we have a disruption in the reticular formation, we can create different um, impedances or abnormal functioning in the effects of the reticular formation. So that's why you can see uh, different emotional or conscious uh, disruptions in, 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 the, in the reticular formation. They, cor they correlate very heavily with uh, loss of consciousness uh, or awareness, feelings of fear and, and or anxiety, uh, different types of see um, confusion, and then visceral and, and motor organ and movement, different uncontrolled jerking movements or staring out into space from the, from the ocular or the eyes. Now again, the job of chiropractic is not to look at these individual symptoms and try to treat them with any type of uh, drug or surgical procedure. Our main goal is to look at a main cause of disruption in the neurological function of the body. One, one major neurological disruption that we deal with is the vertebral subluxation. So if we can help remove uh, disruptions to the body by correcting vertebral subluxations, we're going to dis, uh, decrease the presentation of disruptions to the perception, sensation, and behavior of nerves. This is then going to allow for better communication of the body and the nervous system, better communication in its movements, sensations, regulations, and relations. This then equates with healthy function. 
the better communication we have between our nervous system, the brain above and the body below, found within the upper, that communication link is found in the upper cervical spine. So we can have a better communication between the brain above and the body below. We can have just overall better functioning in the movement, sensation, regulation, and relation of those nerves, which equates with healthy function. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions about how upper cervical chiropractic uh, is connected to seizures and epilepsy, please contact me at ohiospecific.com. Thanks again.